Hello guys, this is Paul with VHSCollector.com with another VHS review, and this time it is going to be Bloodthirsty Butchers. Look at that title. <laughs> Makes you want to watch this movie. Bloodthirsty Butchers, you can't beat that. This was released, as you can see, on Midnight Video. Midnight Video released several of Andy Milligan's films. Others include Torture Dungeon and The Rats Are Coming, The Werewolves Are Here, I believe it's called. And they also released several of H.G. Lewis's films and Microwave Massacre. I'm sure you guys know that. They released, I think, altogether eight videos. And so these Andy Milligan ones, at least Bloodthirsty Butchers and Torture Dungeon, are the most difficult ones to find. Especially, like I said, Torture Dungeon. I have all these movies, including the variants. This is a clamshell. And there's also a big box. I have both, as you can see. This one was given to me by my good friend Steve from Pine Hollow Video. And this one I got from Amazon for 50 bucks, believe it or not. This is a really cool <laughs> video to have. It's uh, pretty tough to find. I would love to get Torture Dungeon. Honestly, I stopped collecting or looking for videos and hunting and uh, I just never ended up completing my midnight video collection I do have the clamshells and I have the big boxes but there's just I'm just missing torture dungeon so when we look at the cover here it says their prime cuts were curiously erotic but thoroughly brutal sadism was just an appetizer for the bloodthirsty butchers but yeah the, the cover is not very gruesome or gory you have a guy with a cleaver with some blood dripping from it but otherwise it's not incredibly gory cover, but, but the title is bloody. And the title's just great, Bloodthirsty Butchers. Now, Andy Milligan could be ranked with the worst of the worst. Uh, him and Nick Millar, Ray Dennis Steckler, those guys are just terrible filmmakers. It's just god-awful. Um, I bet you if those three guys came together, um, they would still not be able to make a movie. With, you know, It's just it, they're that bad. And I would rank Andy Milligan with almost just as bad as Nick Millar. It is bad because when you watch Bloodthirsty Butchers, we'll get more into it later, you just assume that this has to be his first movie. It's just that bad. But actually, he made like a dozen other movies before this. I think of film aesthetics as a sort of logic. So whenever I see these really, really bad films, I, I just can't help but think like, was this directed by a retard? I don't mean to be so harsh, but really, I feel like some film aesthetics are just obvious, especially editing. His background now, Andy Milligan, is in theater. He started to do, I think, theater production, playwriting, and he actually opened up a costume store in the city, I think. He's originally from Staten Island. And I think he wrote some of these um, plays for for off-off-Broadway, and he wanted to, I guess, immortalize them in film, so I think it just comes off as him just holding the camera and shooting these performances on a stage or something. They're not on a stage, but he's not interested in the language of film. He's interested in just capturing a theatrical performance, because the camera's moving all over the place. It's jerky, and when we get down to the editing, the editing is really awful. I, I did just jump cuts all over this movie. Everywhere. I don't even know why. How do you have that many jump cuts? Are pieces of the film missing? Like, I can't begin to understand. You really have to watch this movie to see how bad it is. But it's not like we could just make the excuse that pieces of the film are missing. He breaks some pretty basic uh, cinematic film rules like breaking the 180 degree rule which means shooting someone from one side and then shooting them from the other side which gives the illusion that they switch places I don't know if I'm describing that very well but uh, he breaks that rule continuously it seems like he just hates film editing and tries to avoid it by any means possible a lot of the shots go on for a while so like I said there's no real artsy eye when he's doing this he has no eye for uh, film aesthetics as I said. It was clearly shot on 16 millimeter film. The picture quality is pretty rough. The sound quality is pretty rough and the framing of this movie particularly I guess for this VHS is terrible. People's faces are cut out of the movie constantly. Sometimes after their head is cut off from the top sometimes it's cut off from the sides so I don't know what they were doing when they put this on video really. <laughs> So, I don't know 
maybe he shot it like that. Maybe he's just so bad that he actually shot it like that. There is a DVD of this out there. I usually don't review movies that are on DVD. But I made an exception because I still consider this a, a pretty obscure film. But from what I understand, from what I read, I don't have the DVD, but from what I read in reviews, the DVD takes a lot of artistic license with this movie. They actually took the movie and slowed down a bunch of scenes. I don't know why. Um, if that reviewer is correct, it, it seems kind of silly that they would do that. This movie needs a lot more work than just slowing down some scenes. I bet that, like... If someone felt ambitious enough, they could probably take this movie and recut it with what's available in the VHS and make it look a little bit better. I don't know. I feel like it was just kind of slopped together. Just kind of all the pieces put together kind of loosely and then just, eh, just, you know, put it on there. But I'll admit, I'll give him credit that the writing is okay compared to the filmmaking. The plot to this movie is incredibly boring. It's not centered around the murders. If no one's familiar, this actually is based on the Sweeney Todd story. Uh, the murderous barber. He's part of the plot, but it seems like so much of this story revolves around adultery, <laughs> really. And murders happen here and there, but really the focus seems to be on this person is cheating on this person, this person has a mistress with this person, this person is going to get married to this person. It's sort of ridiculous, so it kind of seems like Sweeney Todd murdering people is kind of like a subplot. I'm just going to go through the plot very loosely. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but there's a girl named Joanna, and she's kind of like an indentured servant for Mrs. Lovett, I think her name is, and she sells pies at her bakery. Later, it's revealed that Miss Lovett is in cahoots with Sweeney Todd, and Sweeney Todd is killing his customers, taking their jewelry, giving the bodies to Miss Lovett, and I think she's putting them in pies. But they don't really dwell on a lot of that. The murder scenes are quite ridiculous in themselves and just how they're edited. You see arms getting cut off. You see a head get cut off. There's certainly blood, but it's so choppy. So many jump cuts in those. I don't know if those cuts were for the censors. The gore is still there. From what I read on IMDb, there was a scene missing, and it's available as a still frame in a like lobby card or a publicity photo of guts or something. But in this movie, you do see the severed hands, and you do see, I think, a severed head. But it's not incredibly gruesome, and there's not a lot of kills. I think there's only like two gruesome-looking kills, and the rest are stabbings and, and such. Sweeney Todd actually kills one of his mistresses by strangling her, but <laughs> he only strangles her for like three seconds, literally, and she dies. It's a total joke to look at. <laughs> it's so stupid. So when it's revealed that Sweeney Todd is killing people and bringing them to the basement of Miss Lovitz, people scramble to go there, and that whole scene... It's a big mess. You don't know what's going on. The camera's shaking all over the place. There's a bunch of people running and screaming. You can't tell what the hell's going on. It's such a mess. It's a terrible, terrible climax if it's supposed to be climax because you don't, you don't know what's going on. You don't know who's getting arrested, who's getting killed. You don't know what is happening. Now, there's a few funny things about this movie um, besides how terribly constructed it is, but uh, there seems to be a weird theme with spitting on people in this movie. And... At least twice someone gets spit on. One guy gets, you know, the woman makes him go on his knees, tells him to open his mouth, and she spits in his mouth. Kind of gross. <laughs> and another scene, the wife of some guy, forget, forgot his name, she spits on him and he kills her. And in another scene, I think an actor, I think maybe Sweeney Todd or another character, says to the other man, I should spit on you or something. It seemed really bizarre. But according from what I read about... Andy Milligan, he was into S&M. No, I've been out enough from this with you. That's the way I like it. Sometimes you're too rough on me. You like it that way, don't you? I'm afraid we'll go too far. So I think the S&M theme was, uh, was in this movie, certainly. A few other funny things. A uh, woman gets a pie, she opens it up, <laughs> and it's just a boob on top of the pie. It looks really goofy and fake. Equally ridiculous in this movie are the love scenes. These people look so uncomfortable doing these love scenes. It's so goofy. I don't know how Andy Milligan just lets this stuff go, but he just doesn't care, I guess. And if these characters or actors feel uncomfortable doing these love scenes, don't dwell on it so much, but he does. Uh, I wouldn't watch the movie more than once, but... Uh, those few goofy moments are certainly worth laughing at. So guys, that is my review of 
Bloodthirsty Butchers, this obscure, hard-to-find VHS, directed by Andy Milligan in 1970. It is absolutely terrible. Um, it could be, you know what, I'd compare it to something like The Terrorists by uh, um, Nick Millard. It's very similar to that in poor, crappy quality, shot in 16 millimeter. Uh, sounds terrible, looks really rough, um, and not very entertaining. A lot of drama, boring drama in the movie, a few weird death scenes, but otherwise, not much here. A few funny moments, but it's up to you to uh, decide whether they're worth making you watch this movie again. This has been Paul with VHSCollector.com, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good night. Good day to you, Mr. Busker. Good day. I'm Wonder Pie. Your usual? Yes. Joanna, would you get me a cup of tea, please? It's going to cost you a little more. Why? You know very well why. Uh, how much more? Two shillings. That's highway robbery. Not when you consider the source. Uh, do I get the part? Then always. Yes, yes. How does? The same. I never see her anymore. She, she never goes out much in daylight. Do you want a pie for her? Yes, if she can have the part she wants. Well, what's that? <laughs> really? Very well, Mr. Busker. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow morning. That'll be half a crown. Oh, sorry. And good day to you, Mr. Busker. Good day. What a strange man. Really? I hadn't noticed.